If it swims, he seeks it. If it exists, he will find it. And if it's possible, he'll catch it. Simply Fishing and host Bob Masakomer are on a quest to expand your fishing horizons on every episode. Brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Beckman, North America's trusted name in nets. Klein Nissan, your Nissan dealer with a global perspective. M&G by Lindy, now with the Buckaboo. Pose, makers of the original giant jackpot and a waker. Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Angler's Edge Plus, fishing on the edge of technology. And by Western Filaments Tough Lines, when only the toughest will do. All she was was there. Just kind of stopped it, huh? Yeah. Nice fish, very nice fish. We, we're gonna get more of these. All she was was there though. I just picked up on the rod. Yeah. That's a nice fish, Bob. You like that, huh? Yeah, I like that a lot. Here, baby. That's a horse. That's a horse. That's what we're looking That's for. That's what we came for. Let's see if we can get a bunch more of these. Boy, look at the belly on that thing. Good Lord. Oh, buckets. <laughs> Trying to look like me there, girl. <laughs> Thank you. Didn't know they served, uh, huh? Didn't know they served carbs out there. Yes, they do, huh? She was almost dead stick in that grub, though. There he is. Suck one out from underneath yeah. the dock. Gotta love it. Just ready to flip one underneath there. Underneath the dock you were, big guy. Underneath the dock. Oh, you missed one? one? Yeah, there's one in there too. Get him? All right. Uh -huh. Underneath the dock. They think they're largemouth. <laughs> he come out of there. He's not, not near as big as he thought he was, man. He come out of there with gusto. Yes, he did. They get pretty brave when they're through there, I think. He came out of there with gusto, boy. Let me tell you. Another one. Got one too. <laughs> Here's the better. That's a nice fish, Bob. This one's not coming off. Now the right tool makes all the difference. Let's see if we can take four off of there. Got there it is, yeah, sure do. <laughs> we need more docks, Bob. <laughs> you need to go dock fishing, huh? Yep. I think we're down south now. 
<laughs> we caught a bunch of fish there. <laughs> i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm oh, going to change oh, hooks. Oh, my. Get him? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Decent fish, too. Yeah. Oh, this is a... I think this is a mom. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, it's definitely got some belly on her. That's not where you wanted it, but it was a good cast. No, no, no. I actually, I was kind of trying to get it to bounce off of that. Oh, really? Yeah. It. That's the last couple times. It seems like I make a little extra noise. There we go. Yeah. All right. Get off one right there. Get out of there. Why I oughta? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> this fish does not want to. Holy the... smokes, Rocky! Nice fish. That was the queen that they're protecting. Look at this. Nice fish. That's it, right there. Oh, that's the queen. She certainly is beautiful, isn't she? 447. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, you're not gonna believe this. We have been fishing this dock for not more than 15 minutes. We have boated at least 12 smallmouth off of it. When I tell you that we have fished this entire bay and never saw a fish, you have got to believe me. To some, these fish may have been called predictable, but as Ed pointed out, they were truly amazing. <laughs> Although fishing docks is popular, it's not the most common spring technique in this part of the country. That said, this small bay offers great spawning habitat, but there is no significant structure for these fish other than our dock. In a few days, they'll be in the back of this small pocket preparing beds. However, now they prefer the cover of the stock. Note the shade is very close to the dock itself. This is in part due to the fact it's floating. Floating docks will often provoke the bass to be higher in the column if they are at all active. Take the most active fish quickly and then concentrate on those that have fallen down in the column. It works. Give it a try. I can truly say I've never seen anything like this. They were definitely on that shaded corner right there, though. It couldn't have been any more classic. Good. No fish on that. On these fish, Ed and I found our bite started at about noon and lasted for an honest 90 minutes. There we go. If we can stay off of these things and not spook them, look at this. Boy, your little do-nothing french fry thingy wobber works. You like that, huh? <laughs> Oops, shoot, we're open. That's okay, that's okay. We were, we we're on the skag. Oh, this is a nice fish. That's a real nice fish. Hey, boss? You gotta like that. Tiny, tiny deal. What we're doing in here right now, folks, is we're throwing a little bitty french fry on a weightless hook that uh, Ed brought out of his tackle box because, quite frankly, I come up here focusing on munchy grubs, crankbaits, maybe some topwater and some spinnerbaits, but the reality is, is the fish are further along than that and we have to adapt and that's part of that being versatile. You have to be versatile to win at this game. And thank goodness Ed brought a little bit more versatility than I did. Here it is. You got her, huh? Yes, Pulling good too. That was real tight to shore. Oh huh? yeah. Yeah, that was a height that she was right on. <laughs> I 
scrapper. Nice fish. Yeah. Are you ready yet? Nice fish. These little hooks are just sharp as all get out. Good looking fish. And I still have my french fry. Do you actually think you can provoke them to eat? Yeah. Or not to eat, but to to move stuff out of their bed? They're definitely not eating for for food. No, they did that five, six, eight days ago. That's yeah. that, that pre-spawn bite that you like to hit. Yeah, that's the magic bite. Yeah. And you gotta work a little in. harder with this one, but it's it's pretty fulfilling. Yeah. Because here you are actually working for them. And like you said, we're provoking them. There we go. All right. Oh, nice fish. Very nice fish. Bob, I'm guessing you provoked that fish. I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking. Again, these are the males. If we could go back out behind us in the deeper water right now, we would find the females. In the smallmouth world, the females and the, and the males get equally as large. So you can't determine a male by a, and a female by the size. But the fact that these fish are in here, and I'll show you here in a second. And they're very big. You can see there's no real belly on these fish. If you take a look at them, they're not, they're not plump, okay? That's one of the indicators that I'm dealing with a male right now. I'll get her back, him back real quick. But if the females come in, the females are only going to be in here for an hour, maybe up to about five hours. They'll deliver those eggs and shoot, they're gone. The males will stay there to protect the beds. Right now, the males are building the beds. I'm going to spin us back out, turn us. Okay. How oh, thick? That fish right there on that one I'm working right there is yeah. three and a half. Yeah, good. Oh, yeah, I got two. Oh, oh nice fish. You got her, huh? Nice fish. Oh, get out of there. Get, get, get. Oh, I like this fish a lot. This is my fish. Fish badly. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. No fun, huh? I'm still loving this. That's beautiful fish. Beautiful. Look at that. Oh, well, this one could be a female, Bob. Look at the belly. Yeah, I I'm gonna say that that's gonna be the measure that you have to go by because size isn't the measure. Go home, make babies. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Oh man, they're chasing one another in here. What it is, is the males are protecting these beds. That's why you see them scurry all of a sudden. Another male will come into the territory. And you can see the way this little bit of breeze is kind of pushing into this shoreline. There is, there is a thought process out there that says shorelines that receive North-facing, northwest-facing shorelines, those that receive the most, um, what's the word I'm looking for, applicable weather patterns most mm -hmm. often, mm -hmm. are the ones that these fish instinctively relate to. 
they know where to be and where not to be. Oh, doggone it. <laughs> Finally. Oh, there's there's two. One here. That, and that's one. mine. Okay, that's yours down there? Yeah. <laughs> mine, the uncooperative one. This one put up a little bit of a struggle just trying to get him to go. I wonder if he said, hey, all I gotta do is take this hook. It'll be over in five minutes, and then they'll leave me alone. <laughs> Suppose we should leave this audience, go to a commercial break while we uh, prepare yeah. to catch more of these? That'd be a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think about this smallmouth action? I like this smallmouth action. <laughs> I like it a lot. Oh man, oh man. And now for a look at our elements, brought to you by the folks at Speed Tech and the Angler's Edge Plus. Knowledge is in the knowing. Knowing how is important. Knowing where is important. But in most cases, it's wind that makes the big difference. Track your elements as we do and put yourself on the water when it's right. Know the moon phase, parametric pressure, activity periods, and more relative to your surroundings with the Angler's Edge Plus. If you can't find one at your local dealer, simply call 1-800-2228-775 and increase your knowledge today. Sitting right in that deep one. That's a nice fish too. Just save that worm. Yeah. <laughs> this is a nice fish. Yeah. Oh yes. Man, I this floats down so slow. I know. But that's that's why they're digging it. Look at that. That is pretty. Very, very pretty. He's sitting right there. Get her? Yes, sir. That one, that one was kind of in slow motion. He T-boned the uh, the worm. I saw one end come out of his mouth and the other one come out of his mouth. Another nice fish. Oh! <laughs> it's so frustrating. There could be a fish right there. There's a fish there. I can see it. Yeah. Oh, it just swam away. There it is, right here. Catch her. Now it's gonna get back to the bed. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so you don't like my worm, huh? You better like my worm. Take good care of it. Oh. fish. A little bit different bite because it's uh oh as soon as it's out of there it's done. That is one tight holding fish. Oh gobble gobble Go. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Time to go home. Ed says he's got to leave at 3 o'clock. It is almost 3 o'clock. Come here, girl. Oh, 
Good time. Come here, girl. So he's blowing the horn back there. He wants to go so bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the end to, of the, the end just, of the game, Bob. Trying to scare. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a penalty shot of some sort. Yeah. Come here, baby. Come here. Oh. Come here. <laughs> Small ball, folks. You want to do them. You can't always get the season you're looking for. That's a guaranteed fact. But what you can do. With a little bit of sorting out, a little bit of versatility, you can go find these fish. This was Ed's pattern. We had a ball here at Witch Bay this week. Thanks for watching. Catch us next week for more Simply Fishing. Ed, I want to say thanks for being on the show. Did you have a good time? I loved it. He didn't really. We'll see you <laughs> folks next week for more Simply Fishing. Smallmouth, musky, northern pike. Who knows? We'll be in Brazil for peacock someday, too. Yes! That away, baby. I want to thank Gail, Steve, and all the folks back at Witch Bay Camp for making this possible. Without these folks, we couldn't come up here. Remember, practice CPR. Catch photo and release. The future of fishing is in your hands. Yes, we absolutely slapped them. Yes, we did. Yes. <laughs> Good enough. And uh, we're going to be on the rocks. <laughs> <laughs>